So what is a mortgage? A mortgage is an agreement to repay a loan and the lien or the collateral for the mortgage is the property that you own. So some states are different, but in the states that I practice in, or um, whatever the right word is, lend in, they are lien states. And what that means is that I own my home, you own your home, but if we have a mortgage, there's a lien against the home. A promissory note that you're promising to repay based on the terms that you agree to. How does a mortgage work? So basically the lender is going to look at your situation and they're gonna look in a lot of detail, people. Be prepared, there's gonna be questions and there's going to be more questions and more information. Put yourself in the shoes of the mortgage company. Let's say that you were gonna lend someone $200,000 of your money. You would want some details, right? And you would wanna verify those details in writing and you would wanna verify that information from third parties. And that's part of how the mortgage process actually works. Should you do a 15 or 30 year mortgage? Well, the easy answer is, if you can afford a 15 year mortgage, I would absolutely always do that in any case. Many times you're gonna see a half percent difference in your interest rate. That's a lot of things changing with that right now, but that's from my 16 years of experience until the last few weeks. But um, so you're typically gonna save a good bit of a difference on the rate between the 15 and 30. It's a nice reprieve, a nice gift, right? And of course, you're gonna have 15 years left of principal and interest mortgage payments. So that's a huge savings on top of the interest savings, correct? Correct. So with all that being said, a 15 year mortgage is gonna save you a tremendous amount of money. So what are the top three things that you should ask your potential mortgage lender? Number one, ask them what their process looks like. Explain their pre-approval process and what is involved in that. Ask them, number two, will you be dealing with them directly from start to finish? And if not, how many people can you expect to be communicating with you through the process? Number three, be sure to ask what loan types they do. What if they don't do rural development and that's gonna be your best fit? Not every lender actually offers every loan type. So make sure that you ask that as well. Those are my top three questions that you should ask your potential mortgage lender. Pre-COVID, for so many years, I've been closing mortgage loans on an, in an average of two weeks. Before TRID came into effect, which is a bunch of um, new compliance and regulations, before then, my fastest mortgage loan that I closed was in four hours. Yes, took a completed package from another lender that was a denial, was able to get the whole entire process done in four hours. The title was done, the appraisal was done, the insurance, like all the stuff was done. Now, by law, you can't close sometimes in less than eight days or 12 days, all depending upon a number of factors. Even besides that, in the past few years, I've been closing loans on average about two weeks, which is great. You're in out, the customers are happy, um, they're not taking up and losing a lot of their time, so it goes really well. Well, during COVID, then that two weeks went up to around 60 days on average because the industry got completely bombarded. And now, I say since COVID, even though it's not totally done yet, but we're kind of rebounding and getting a little bit better. Um, everybody's getting a little bit um, less backed up, shall I say. And I would say that most of the loans now on average are closing between 30 and 45 days. God. I am so fancy, right? Look at this. So cool, professional fancy. Anyway, so in order to accurately calculate a potential mortgage payment, we needed to know the loan term, the interest rate, if there's PMI, how much is it? If there's flood insurance, how much? If there's home insurance, to get the principal and interest from the loan information above, how much is property taxes, and how much your home association dues. So we're figuring out a monthly mortgage payment. So what do lenders generally look at when it comes to your budget? So the black and white good old days was always 28 and 36. 28% of your income should go to your house. And when you add your house and all of your other debts, it should not be more than 36%. That is like perfection, right? Well, that hasn't been around for quite a long time now just because everything changes. So I would say ideally, the lower the better, do not get me wrong, but shoot for 30%, shoot for 28%, 
but don't go above 35%. I don't think that's really safe to have a payment that's more than 35% of your monthly income. So that's what the lender's gonna look at is, or one of the things they're gonna look at is how much is your income in relation to that new proposed house payment. I could be wrong, but I don't think that I am. When you go to get your credit score, why do you wanna know and why do you care? Well, you wanna know because you probably wanna know what kind of grade that you're going to get if you go to apply for a loan, and especially with a mortgage, what's that credit score gonna be? So if you're pulling from these apps or these free sites and getting a score, but you don't know what score you're getting, that's why I have 15 conversations a day that go like this. Oh, hi, I've got your application, everything looks great. I pulled your three credit scores. I have a 620, a 622, and a 645. And the phone goes silent. And like, well, what do you mean I don't have 700? I went on this app and I went on this website and my credit card said it has 700. Well, that's because there's different grading scales. And that's because I'm pulling for a mortgage, which is a different type of pull than some of the other pulls. It's so confusing and it's also frustrating. And it's a big piece of information that's not being shared clearly with the consumer. So of course, track your credit. Of course, get your scores. Of course, monitor your credit on a constant basis, but know why you want your score, know what score you're getting, and make sure it's relevant to the reason that you want it, because it's usually not relevant to mortgage loans. Within my experience of the 15 conversations I have a day that repeat, just like what I've just said, be happy to rewind and replay it for you. A mortgage interest rate lock is you locking into a rate on a specific property and for a specific period of time based on your parameters and as well as your pre-approval. I know it seems weird and there are some exceptions to this, but I've always wondered in the 16 years I've been doing this, like why don't we lock into a person, Hi. right? But most lenders actually lock into a property and for a period of time linked with a person. Yo. So if you lock in a rate on property A and then that falls through for some reason, inspections or something like that, and now you go on to property B, it's actually gonna be a different rate lock and may even be a different rate because rates change multiple times a day, every single day, it's a constant moving target. What is PMI? PMI stands for Private Mortgage Insurance and PMI is associated with conventional loans. This is not to be confused with MIP. That's mortgage insurance premium, typically associated with government loans, such as RD, VA, or FHA would be another example. Why is PMI not that bad? I'm gonna tell you why. Because PMI gives customers, buyers, the opportunity to own a home when they otherwise might not be able to. So many people do not have 20 and 30% down. So put yourself in the shoes of the lender. If you were lending somebody $400,000, would you not want to take out a policy to insure yourself if they don't put enough skin in the game? Well, that's what that means. If you have a large down payment, AKA skin in the game, and you're doing a 20% down, at least conventional loan, that is the way to avoid mortgage insurance. With VA, FHA, RD, that is not the same case. And that's one thing that so many people get confused on. So, so many people say, oh my gosh, PMI is such a waste of money. It's so awful. It's not awful because you know what? Then you wouldn't be able to buy the house. Would you rather buy the house and pay an insurance policy that protects the lender so that they go ahead and extend that money to you so that you can have home ownership or save up 20 or 30 percent well at least 20 and not have that mortgage insurance well honestly a lot of times it's not going to be an option to buy if you don't have the 20 percent and a lot of us just don't have that 20 percent so pmi or mip allows us that opportunity for home ownership that's why it's not so ugly. Underwriting, what is it? Well, to sum it up, it is the person 
that is behind the scenes to make sure that you meet all of the guidelines required to obtain the mortgage loan that you are applying for. And for the most part, this is a person who's basically just double checking your loan officer and double checking your processor to make sure that they've covered everything. And this person works very closely along with your loan officer and your processor to see that you get through to closing. Again, what they do is they have all the rules. They have all the books. They keep them handy. If you're going FHA, they make sure that you meet those requirements. If you're going rural development, they want to make sure that you meet those requirements. If you're going conventional, same thing. And if you're going VA, same thing. These underwriters sign their name to these approvals and they are licensed and their job's on the line. So they need to do a good job and they need to make sure they don't miss anything. They're not trying to be difficult at all. They're just trying to make sure that you approve based on those required guidelines. Thank you for watching. If you have not subscribed yet, why not? Go ahead and do it. What's it going to hurt? Seriously, though, subscribe to the channel. Don't forget to hit the bell to be notified. Please do share these videos and the channel with your friends and family to help me spread my mission of mortgage peace. And since you're here with me today and you're visiting anyway, stay a little longer. Check out some of these other videos. I'll drop some links up here.